is our room. And in this room, there's two, four, six beds. Some rooms have eight. Um, I think we have one of the smaller rooms. And this is my pod, my name right here. And it's like this, it's my pod. So I have like a ton of like my stuff, like behind here I have bags and stuff of um, clothes and stuff like that. Pretty much all my life is in this pod, um, this um, comfy little pod. And um, yeah, I'm happy about it. Like I'm grateful, you know what I mean? I, I love that I, I found this place and I enjoy it every day. Je vous emmène dans l'état le plus riche des états unis mais aussi sûrement le plus inégalitaire, la Californie. Là-bas, la crise du logement est telle que les micro-logements de 3 mètres carrés apparaissent un peu partout dans les villes de Los Angeles, San Diego et San Francisco. 3 mètres carrés, c'est tout petit, mais vous allez le voir, pour les jeunes Américains qu'on a rencontrés, c'est pas si mal, parce qu'en Californie, 150 000 personnes vivent à la rue. I'm, I'm the house manager, so it's my job to make sure everybody's following the rules. And talking in the rooms is usually breaking the rules. <laughs> Come on in. So, this is my pod right here. Um, I share a room with nine other guys. So I'm one of 10 in this room right here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In living in a tight space like this, the main thing is to compartmentalize and to everything have a spot. I have a lot of um, long sleeve shirts and then um, all of my jeans get hung up there. And then all of my shoes go under here in bags because I don't want them smelling up my pod. I didn't have a home for the first five days that I was here. So I just slept in my car. And I think a lot of people do that. I think a lot of people move here not having a plan and just kind of hoping to find something when they get here. And I think there are, have been a lot of people really happy to find this community here. The only thing that sucks is sometimes not, bathrooms aren't always open. So if you have to go to the bathroom, sometimes they're all taken because so many people live here. I don't think if I had a boyfriend, I would bring them here because it's kind of like, you don't get a lot of privacy here. So if I did, I would definitely be going to their house. I wouldn't bring them here. Studio apartments in LA are like 1500, 1600, like for just one single bedroom. So this place is only 750 a month. So it's really affordable. And do you know where you would be if you hadn't found Upstart? I don't know. I was fully ready. I was fully prepared to almost you know, be homeless. Be a carpet, yeah. You know? like, <laughs> like we gonna make it work. I was fully Here comes the pain. The future's blur. The past is gray. I wanna love. I know. I don't think it's the end of the American dream, but I think it's a new way that people are being forced to live to follow that dream. What can I do? La crise du logement en Californie, c'est des loyers inabordables et des salaires qui n'augmentent pas pour une grande partie des salariés. Et c'est Arnold Schwarzenegger, ancien gouverneur de cet état, qui le dit. Son nouveau combat, c'est le mal logement en Californie. Please welcome to the stage the 38th governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, thank you very much. California is, without any doubt, the most beautiful place in this country. We are the biggest and the best economy also in this country. That does not mean we don't have problems. 
As a matter of fact, our homeless problem has become a crisis. We have 10 cities in every major city in California. I mean, I watch the crisis grow, driving my bike every morning through Venice. I see the tents popping up. There was a woman, for instance, on the 60 Minutes piece that was a mail carrier for the US Postal Service who lived in her car because she couldn't afford her apartment. And I was absolutely shocked when I saw that. Seeing that homeless postal worker on television was a brutal reminder, a brutal reminder that the dream of being middle class in America is slowly slipping away. It is a crisis. We can do better and we must do better. Je vous donne juste un chiffre pour comprendre l'ampleur de cette crise en Californie. 50 000 retraités, étudiants ou salariés vivent dans leur véhicule. On est allé à la rencontre de Jessica, elle étudie à Berkeley, l'une des plus prestigieuses universités du pays, et elle nous reçoit chez elle, dans son camping-car. Il y a au moins 28 adultes et plus de 4 enfants. Et c'est notre petite communauté, nous sommes amis sur les wheels. Ce sera Chloe, puis Pam, puis Janet, puis nous avons Lucien à côté de la rue, puis nous avons Ali's famille à côté de la rue. Derrière vous, nous avons Nick. Donc oui, tous nous avons trouvé une maison ici, dans cette intersection. So my neighbor Frank lives over here, and Mercedes over here. Frank's been here for about two months, and she's been here for five years on this block. <laughs> yeah, so she's the OG of the block. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you guys can come in. <laughs> uh, I sleep over here in the bunk bed, and I just have like a sleeping bag, you know, because it's been cold this winter. But this helps, it really helps. Uh, it's just as the couch, it turns into a bed, so then I have some, sometimes I can have another person sleeping here. I've been living in this RB since the summer of 2017. It's pretty common to find ho homeless students at UC Berkeley, and especially just because the housing market is just so expensive. Like even the student housing that they're building for students is not affordable. Like most of it is sitting half empty because they're asking for at least two grand per month. And that's something that realistically not all of us have. For a person to work a full-time job while going to school full-time as well, you know, it's not easy. So one thing has to give. But yeah, I do see a lot of students giving up that luxury of housing just because they want to go to school. It's homelessness in the 50s and 60s. So, you know, if you look at it, a lot of things haven't really changed, you know? You still have people living on the streets, you know, and you have families, you know, living in small spaces. It's basically what's happening now. Like nothing about it has changed. It's still the same, you know? Nothing ha has been, you know, fixed. So I just feel like people are still being put in this kind of situation, living in shelters, you know, instead of, you know, looking for a permanent solution. And I think that's what we need to do, you know? We had 50 years of doing this, of temporary solutions. When are we gonna get housing, you know? Yeah. I've been living in various vehicles for about four and a half, five years. I'm a mobile mechanic. I know people who work two jobs who still live in a tent underneath an overpass. Um, <clears throat> the cost of living is absolutely insane. It, it's so expensive to live here. There is no American dream anymore. The American dream is to not die in debt. You know, that's the American dream. Au pays du capitalisme roi, un accident de la vie, une maladie ou une perte d'emploi, ça pardonne pas. Et c'est pourquoi on voulait vous raconter l'histoire d'Octavio. Il a 63 ans, trois boulots, mais après des problèmes de santé, il se retrouve désormais à la rue. C'est l'histoire d'un travailleur précaire qui raconte aussi l'Amérique d'aujourd'hui.
Little fitness. Can take a shower, get clean, sometimes shave. I decided just to leave my beard this time and just be like a normal person. And uh, basically go to work from here. And yeah, that's my daily routine. I feel like a normal person, like I have a home. And that way nobody knows that I'm homeless. When I became homeless, the very, very, very first night, I parked outside of a restaurant that I used to go all the time. I don't know what I was thinking, maybe thinking that they will defend me if something happened, because I was just there. That was my very first night. I, looking for dark streets or places where I could park and nobody can see me inside my car. There, it, it, it must be okay. I keep in my car, pretty much this is my closet. I keep here shoes that I may need if I have to dress up for work. I have three jobs. I, I do bookkeeping, which is accounting, and I, I work in a real estate office, and I'm an actor, just like any other people come here following the Hollywood dream. Here in Los Angeles, to be able to keep the life that I have, I have to make probably about $5,000 every month. And some months I make barely $2,000. Now I'm in my bedroom. So I have this blanket, thank God. And then what I do, I take my telephone. I set up myself like if I'm in the movie theater and then look for Netflix. This is about a guy who owns the town pretty much. And then I just cover myself. And then I go to sleep. That's pretty much what I do every night. They always say, this is the best country in the world. But people that can work, why do they have to be on the streets? What's wrong with this country? 